Hello everyone, I'm Brittany Kalis with SIG University and today we're kicking off our Faculty Friday series with SIG's very own President and CEO, Don Tura. In this series, we're meeting with faculty members of SIG University to get to know them a bit better and ask a few questions about SIG University and the program. Hi Don, welcome and thank you for joining us today. Hi Brittany, it's my pleasure. Don, would you please start off by telling us a little bit about yourself and SIG University? Yeah, so um, folks, nice to meet you if I don't know you already, but my name is Dawn Tura and I have the pleasure of being the CEO of, of SIG, which is also a sourcing industry group and the parent company to SIG University. Um, I've been in the supply chain industry for decades now um, and I just I had the opportunity to take over SIG in 2007 and so I've had the pleasure of running it um, for quite a few years now and just watching it grow and evolve and watching our industry evolve. So background is I'm a CPA with a master's in international taxation. I know, what? Um, but my passion is really sourcing and how we can improve business processes. So excited to be here today, Brittany, and I'm ex I am love SIG University, as you know, so excited to be faculty as well. Okay, great. Can you tell us a little bit about SIG University? Yeah, so, you know, it's one of those, what you might want to call a passion project. When I first took over SIG, we kept having CPOs tell us that we don't have any modern training. You know, there's there are things that my father might have been taught but nothing that really focused on today's sourcing professional. And so after a couple of years of hearing this, we said, hey, we are going to invest and, and we invested heavily. It was well over a million dollars of investment just to kick off our first program. And it was a huge learning curve, but we went out to all the experts. The CPOs helped us design our original program, which is Certified Sourcing Professional. And it took about a year to create it. We went out to attorneys to write the business contract law. We went out to CPAs to write the financial analytics. We went out to, to organization development experts for change management, sustainability experts for sustainability, sourcing experts like Kate Vitasic for the sourcing part of it. So we looked to all the experts in our field to create the first program. And so it was born out of love for the profession. And I have to be honest with you, Brittany, you know, I have kids and yes, they are my proudest achievement, but from a business perspective, this is my proudest achievement ever is to create, you know, a, a facility, a way that we can upskill everyone in the sourcing industry. So, yeah, so it was born out of passion and it still today remains my passion project. Absolutely. That is so wonderful. Don, you are one of SIG University's faculty for Certified Sourcing Professional or CSP program for short, as you just talked a little bit about, but could you give us a high level overview of what students can expect from the CSP program? Yeah, so yeah, it's so great being faculty because I get to work with the students as they're learning. So it's a completely online program and it's designed in weekly modules that must be completed. And each module has a series of lessons completely online. But there is also an online classroom where all of our students go to interact. And the beauty of it is, is that you may be in a classroom with people from, I don't know, 20 different industries. They might be in 15, 20 different countries. And so to have people get, be able to go in and say, well, I'm in banking and this company, and this is how we do it. And I'm in uh, CPG, consumer packaged goods, and this is how we do it. And at my last company, this is how we addressed it. And so students learn from one another and what our real goal is to commonize on a single language around sourcing. So what's really neat is we had a cohort, which is a, a classroom group, and they said we were talking to people in Egypt, London, LA and New York and Toronto at the same time and comparing the different sourcing approaches coming from different countries, different language interpretations. So the classroom is just a fantastic place to get to know the students and help them along their journey. That's wonderful. So Don, you just mentioned um, about a common language within sourcing learned through the CSP program. Could you explain what that means a little bit more and why it's so important? Yeah, you know, it depends on where you learned your sourcing and, um, and quite often it's a consulting firm that might have come into your organization and helped you through it. So whether or not it's a seven step process or a 12 step process or a 10 step process, everyone comes in with their own language. For example, someone that you procure from could be a supplier, it could be a vendor, it could be a provider, it could just be a consultant, but the language is different. The way that we talk about 
um, revenue is very different. It's turnover if you're in the UK and it's income if you're in the US. So there's just minor differences that people that it's funny, a minor difference in the English language and we're worlds apart in meaning. So another really prime example is that if you are in the healthcare industry and you're a hospital, you are called the provider and everyone else are vendors because you provide the healthcare and they vend or supply to you. Well, anywhere else, a supplier would be the person you buy from. So it's really important that we get people around a common language so that when you're in different countries and different parts of a global association or global organization, you can communicate and mean the same thing. So we introduce a glossary of terms and, you know, it's funny, Brittany, you wouldn't remember the day, but when we first start out even sourcing, sourcing wasn't a word. And we used to use something called word perfect and it would spell check to souring. It wasn't a word in the English dictionary. So not only do we have words that have been introduced over the years, but each country, and I would say each English as a second language has a way of interpreting these terms. So what we're trying to do through our glossary of terms and by cementing this language is that no matter where you are in the world, if you're working with a team, you have the same meaning. So I'm very passionate about creating a global sourcing language. And so that's really exciting for us. I completely agree, Don. I think that is so wonderful. So Don, there are 10 weeks to the CSP program and you are typically always the faculty for week one, welcoming the students to the program, getting everybody acclimated. Could you explain what the faculty's role is for the CSP program and how students can expect to interact with the faculty each week? Yeah, so I'd love to be there to welcome them into the classroom, you know, being week one, because as I explained, you know, this, is, this is one of my passions. It's really important that the students do interact in the classroom. And although it's all online, what the faculty does is position different questions. And so the questions are designed to say, you know, are you grasping the material? How are you going to apply the material? And so each week is different faculty. A lot of it is based on who we are and what our expertise is. And so each faculty member, which the beauty of it is, and say are different people, they come at the same topic from different angles. And so what we're trying to do is make sure that we're not leaving any students behind and that they're grasping. And that's why it's mandatory that you respond and that you participate in the classroom. And that way we know that you're not only engaging, but you're also learning. And we can watch you learn by the way you respond to the questions that we position. So it's really neat. The students will have exposure to all kinds of different executives. And like I said, you know, we all come at it from a slightly different perspective. And at the end of it, we think that we're educating the students and, and making them better rounded than they would then versus just one person talking the whole way through. Remember this program is so full of hard skills, soft skills, sourcing skills, change management, sustainability, RPA, AI, AI you know, the whole alphabet soup. So really no one person is the expert in all of those. And that's why we try and bring in different faculty. Thank you so much, Don. That kind of takes us in to my next question for you. Uh, the first week of the CSP program provides an introduction to both business finance and business analytics. Could you explain a little bit more about why you start the CSP program with those topics? Well, yeah, and it's not like to punish people or anything else if they're not excited about it, but truly the program is in three chunks. The first one third are all the hard business skills, the financial analytics, the contract language, the things that you might have forgotten when you went through school. A lot of people are told to look at financial statements and gauge you know, the well-being of a company. Well, they don't have the faintest idea how to do that. So we use the first one third of the program, which is more than the first week when I'm faculty, to start getting, getting grounded in all of the technical skills, the hard skills that you need to have learned. The center third is all this, the deep sourcing expertise and that's taught by Kate Vitasic. And the last third are what we call the soft skills, the change management. How do I work with a stakeholder? How do I, how do I present and sell the same concept up, down and across my organization? So we want to start people with the hard skills because they're going to need all of those skills to go through the rest of the program. And so it's just a great wake up for a lot of people. Like I said, sometimes it's just, oh yeah, I learned that in business school or something like that. Other times it's the first time they learned it, but the light bulbs that go off when they're starting like, oh my gosh, I never thought about that. Or, oh, I can't wait to apply it. Or, oh, I didn't know why we did that step. 
So yeah, so I'd like starting off with the hard skills because it's just really important to understand. But then I like this, I, I love the fact that the program finishes with all the soft skills as well. Absolutely, Don. that is so wonderful. Thank you so much. So finally, I'd like to ask one more question. What has been your favorite moment of serving as faculty for SIG University? Oh, wow. Um, I think it's the light bulb moments. You know, when someone said, now I finally understand, you know, why we're doing this step in the process. It's, I just love it when people, you know, when we can see them physically and mentally moving forward with us. And I don't want any student left behind. So by being there week one, I get to help pull and engage and, you know, and, and even make it safe for some people that might be worried about the program. So I don't have a single situation, but I love the light bulb moments. Definitely, Don. That definitely speaks to your passion behind SIG University and wanting to help and teach the students and create that common language within sourcing. Well, that is a wrap on our first installment of Faculty Friday by SIG University. Thank you so much, Don, for spending a few moments with us and thank you for your contributions to the industry. It means so much. And make sure to tune in each Friday to meet another member of our faculty and learn more about SIG University. Thank you, Brittany.